I'm going to be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know Monk. he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I, know, I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horse. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded long intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast, episode number 21 with me, Dan Bardell, and my trusty friend, Thomas Julian. You well? I'm very well, thank you. Trusty friend, I appreciate that. Yeah, you'll no doubt go on to have a stinker now that I've called you trusty and prove yourself to be untrustworthy. It's very nice. Usually I get something uh, more derogatory than that. So trusty, we'll go from there and, and see how it falls down. Tom's in a rush tonight, so it's going to have to be a quick, a quick podcast. He wants to get back, and he's got important phone calls to take. So I'm digging him out a little bit very at much the start, are, yeah. but we'll see how the podcast goes. International break, enjoyed it, nothing did. Uh, How's it been? I watched the first game, and it was dreadful against Slovenia. Yeah, uh, that was, I did too. That was that was. That was really, really terrible on Thursday night. Uh, made it a little bit better with the under 21s performance against Scotland on Friday night, which I, which I enjoyed. Uh, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the next game. Um, no, nor did I. It was a, it was a nothing for me, and obviously didn't matter to England either. Um, so yeah, not too much to comment on really. Yeah, no. I watched the. Uh... Wales Ireland game last night. Not the best football match in the world. Obviously, Glenn Whelan came on in the second half, and uh, James Chester played 90 minutes for Wales. So always nice to see Villa players come away unharmed. But yeah, it wasn't a classic did by any stretch uh, of the imagination. Onoma's goal for the uh, under 21. I did. I did. What a strike! What a finish! What that a strike! Was. He actually, while, while we're talking about him, he had some notes. Did you see this? No. Nope. Uh, he said that playing for Villa uh, has. Um, has massively improved his game. He said he's tried to add goals to it, and obviously England and Villa are seeing seeing the benefits or the starting to see the benefits of that. He said um, he feels fitter and stronger, and it's great to get minutes. Uh, and he feels like he's always learning at the club, and as he should be. There's a lot of senior players around that club, and and he's only 20 years old. He's got lots to learn. I can tell that you're in a rush because you have gone straight into the <laughs> into the football. No mention no. of pigeons or anything <laughs> like that. You have gone straight into the football. You are not messing around tonight. Uh, we were talking about international break. It just fit, you know. Fair enough. I'm a professional, if nothing else. You are a, are a professional. See, you know, oh, no. Uh, no, no, what? Sorry, I, would, I didn't say anything I should have. Okay, I good. just saw the Lee Johnson thing. Well, I thought, I thought because it's a special occasion and I, I'm not in a rush, I wanted to bring back the squad number game. We'll do that later. I think it's a bit early to be, oh, yeah, to be doing that. I genuinely didn't see anything I on got, your note. I on got your very note. scared there for a second. Shouldn't be leaving your notes out for me to say, though, if there is a quiz on there. No, absolutely not. One mi- minus muck for me. What right. do you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about Villa, shall we? Yeah, How about why not? Uh, should we start with a game that's, that's coming up? A huge game Massive. Uh, for Villa. It's on the telly if, you, if you're not going to the away fixture against Wolves this Saturday evening. Um, and, and we talked about it, I think, last week and maybe the week before where... International breaks are always a little bit nervy, aren't they? Because there's a risk of injury. We saw it with Manchester United. Fellaini is out now for a couple of games, including the Liverpool game. But but Villa seems to have come through it fairly unscathed. Keenan Davis, um, I read today that Steve Bruce expects him to be fit uh, come the weekend, which is good. So apart from the Neil Taylor suspension... Bad news, that. That is bad news, which the the, the suspension, if you haven't seen, was upheld. So Three Taylor, Taylor missed the whole of October. Um, not ideal. Not ideal in the slightest. So, apart from the left back situation, which we touched on last week, and we'll no doubt talk about again because we love fullbacks, the the squad or the 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 team you'd expect to remain the same, or do you think Bruce is going to go a little bit more defensive against Wolves? I think he should go a little bit more defensive. I don't know whether he will. He, I think he'd probably be loath to change a winning team, but maybe with injuries, if Keenan Davis is injured and whatnot, maybe he will change it. I think if we're playing four four two against Wolves, we're asking for trouble. Right. I know it's been a system that's worked for us. We've been doing well. We've been winning games. Obviously, we've won our last four. Is it? Yeah. Playing, playing four four. Unbeaten in eight. Pl- yeah. Unbeaten in eight. The last four have been four four two. But I think aside a fluid team like Wolves, I think you'd be asking for trouble with two in central midfield, especially when one of those is Glenn Whelan, who is not the most mobile. So. I'd expect Onoma to come in. Who for? I don't know. I, I think Adoma will possibly make way, make, make way if Davies is fit and Codger will move wide and we'll go 4 3 3. Snodgrass obviously scored for for Scotland yep. in, in midweek. You wouldn't take him out. Codger and Davies aren't going to go anywhere, so Adoma would be the unlucky four guy for me. That would be 
Uh, I just find that a bit counterintuitive because Adoma's been one of our best players the last two or three games. I, I see what you're saying about the system and, and that makes sense. But, but Adoma's been the lifeblood, really, of, of, of us going forward. He's, he's created a lot of our attacks and he's scored a couple of goals as well. I know, but then Codge is your best player on his day. Davis has been the most effective proper centre forward we've had for a f- for a few years, and Snodgrass is obviously a br- a proper Bruce player, if you like. And I think he needs games for fitness, and I think he's been very very good without being fully fit. So if he's coming into full fitness now, you you don't take him out. I think Adoma would be the would be the full guy. Isn't this one of these games where we've talked about it before? Um, Keenan Davis needs some time where he's where he's not playing. I can't remember if he was involved in in youth. England appearances this weekend or not, but sometimes you can take him out of this side. Does it not make sense where we uh, we could have Codger up front on his own? I know I, I'm not advocating this. I'm just trying to trying to get it through my head that Adoma wouldn't be playing because it just just seems balmy. I know, but any of those four, if you take him out, yeah. it would it would seem balmy. That's the whole point. Now we, we've got a squad. I mean, to be honest, it seems balmy. A, a talent like Onima being on the bench, but I think he'll be the one that comes in mm-hmm. and it and it, and it be four three three. It shows the depth of the squad now, which this is a squad that should be challenging. And against Wolves, I think that four three three would would best serve us rather than a four four two. Yeah, and I I can see Codger playing that Adoma role where where he kind of drifts off Keenan Davis. He doesn't necessarily stay to the left hand side. He's going to kind of cut in and 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 get on the outside as well. And when you have someone like Keenan Davis. He's going to hold the ball up. He's going to win the ball high up the pitch, and then he's going to bring players like Snodgrass, Codger, Adoma, whoever it might be, into the game as well. Ian Taylor said it to me the other day on Facebook in the in the last game. He says you need different teams and different formations for mm. different occasions, and I think this is one of those occasions where you are going to have to change things around a, a bit and be and be a little more compact because we if we go out there all guns blazing, Wolves have got so many dangerous players attacking wise mm-hmm. that they will pick us off they've got a lot of pace as well and obviously our defence isn't the quickest we've got problems at left back I suppose that would be one thing Codger would have to do a lot of dirty work on the left wing would he be as prepared to do that as a, as a dome because we're going to have a problem at left back because we're going to have someone there who isn't fully comfortable there well let's talk about that then uh, the Birmingham Mail ran a little poll um, and 43% of the vote says Richie Delat to be our left back choice do you agree with the majority? I agree with it but I don't think it'll happen because I don't think he's fit enough he hasn't played the games he hasn't played a league game all season I think it would be a massive ask to chuck him in against Wolves if Helder Costa's playing I mean we discussed this quite in detail last last time Yeah. as well I think it would be a massive ask to put him up against on his weaker side up against a player like Costa who was one of the best players in the championship last year I think I think it's going to be Hutton I think it's inevitable it's Hutton and it's not his best position but he'll he'll do he'll do his best. Whether his best is good enough is, is another thing. It's open for debate. But I just think that's who Bruce will go for because he's played the most football out of the fullbacks that are available. I don't think you can put Bjarnson there, even though he's done well in uh, international break for Iceland. He isn't a defender. Hunt's a, Hunt's a defender. He's a fullback. He's played the most games this season. It's the logical one for me. But I would like to see Delap. But I don't think he'll be fit enough. Yeah, Bjarnson struggled, didn't he? When when we played Colchester there, um, for me it feels like. I'd put I'd put Mitch Clark there personally. Like he played against Wigan. I know Wigan's a League One team, but they came into the game with a lot of confidence, whereas Villa had started the season a little bit ropey. And he showed a really good account of himself and I thought he did enough to to kind of make that deputy position his own and he didn't do anything wrong, no. as, as far as I can remember. And uh, I think he would be a more natural choice than than Hutton. Having said that, I feel like Hutton plays his best games when he's got something to prove. And he obviously hasn't been playing. He'll want to put himself maybe in the shop window for January or just to try and force him, force his way into Bruce's plan somehow. I, mean, I don't want to dwell on this too long because we did speak about it last week, but Mitch Clark isn't a left back. No, He can do a job there and he did a job there well, in, the, need, in, the, in the League Cup. It's, it's different plan against a league, who do, it was Wigan, wasn't it? It's different plan against a League One reserve team, so I don't think Wigan fielded their first, their first or two, true. then it is playing against one, a team in the top two in the championship. I don't, it's a shame Taylor's not playing, because we'd, we'd have most players fit of our best 11. If, if Taylor was playing, it would be a real good barometer of how far we've come, because obviously we've won the last four games, but you could level the games that we should win. This is a game you wouldn't necessarily expect us to win. I think even the most diehard Villa fan knows this is a real tough game and would take a point right now, but I just, that left back issue is going to cause us problems, whoever's there, because we don't have a natural fit. Carl Palmer on Twitter, he's got a free bet, a £10 free oh, yeah. bet. Where where would you put his money? 
Considering it's not your money, you can do whatever you like with it. Uh, £10 free bit. If I was feeling the frisco, <laughs> I'd go for the Wolves to be winning at half time, Villa to be winning at full time. Oh, nice. Villa to win the game. That, there's always good, good odds, good, good odds on, on that kind of thing. I'd go, I'd go for that. I'm going to go for that. I don't think there'll be loads of goals. No, do not. No, I think it'll be relatively tight. Well, there has be, to be at least three goals. I know, I think it'll be 2-1. Two, two, Okay. To someone. I don't know who the... OK, good. Yeah. Well, there you go, Carl. I would go for Codger first goal scorer. Uh, I, I I agree with Dan. I think Codger's going to be the man that plays. And I think this is... Uh, well, obviously, he scored a penalty last time out. Uh, I think he's going to... I think he's going to notch again this week. And I'm... I'd love to say I'm feeling... I'm feeling quite nervous about it's, this week. The international breaks come at the wrong time. If we carry in that bit of momentum, I just always feel like the international break, break things breaks things up. Well, literally, it does. Yeah. yeah, it breaks things up a little bit, and it always comes at the wrong time. For us, it's going to be a really tough game. I'd feel a lot more confident if Neil Taylor was playing. I think he's a very, very important member of the team and very underrated. But he's even more important when you consider we don't have another replacement for him. Do you want to talk a player that could have been a re- replacement for him in a different different lifetime? Amave. Jordan Amave. Yeah. yeah, he was called up into the French squad this week. He's gone now as well, hasn't he? He's actually gone. They've uh, he's played the number of games required to trigger yes. his move to be yep. permanent. So he's gone now. So all the best to him. Jumping the gun Sorry, a little bit there. Uh, he was called up to the French squad. Didn't play against Bulgaria. Uh, could play tonight as we're recording against Belarus at home. Uh, yet to make his debut for the French national team. He... I mean, their squad is serious. Yeah, they've got so much depth. I mean, I think he, they've got a few injuries at left back, so I think he's like their fourth or fifth choice left back. They've got an unbelievable squad, friends. Absolutely unreal. Obviously, playing well enough uh, at Marseille to, to warrant a call up, regardless of the the injuries. I mean, there's several left backs you'd imagine in Ligue 1 that could have been called up. I mean, I can't claim to have seen much no. of Ligue 1 or how Amavi's done. Yeah, done there, but. He's played a lot of games for the under under twenty one. So obviously that's what derailed his Villa career early doors. He got injured, mm-hmm. got a bad injury, playing for the under twenty one. So I suppose he's a natural fit in some ways because he's showing the progression. And they, I think they like that in France. They like the progression of you, if you've done your time in the under twenty one, they quite like you to make the step up. Which makes sense. So they've maybe gone for him as a younger option to gain experience in what's effectively a nothing game. Maybe there's a more established French left back that could have been called up. But they obviously want to see what he's about. Expect him to play tonight. Do you? If there's nothing riding on it, why, why, why wouldn't you? Well, they're a point ahead of the next team in there in Group A, I believe. Um, so I guess oh, I thought they'd already qualified, so that shows how much I know. That you, you might be right. I, I had a look earlier today, and I thought they were only a point ahead. Uh, but, they're, I mean, they're playing Belarus at home. You'd, You'd expect, expect them to, to do, do the business, wouldn't you? In conclusion, neither Tom or I know what the French group situation is, so don't quote either of those things. When Dan says the international break is literally breaking things up, you and I seem to have had a little break as well, don't we? Oh, I love a break. You, you Absolutely love a break. certainly do. I used to work with not, him. Not can, one for research. I can attest to that. Um, Manager of the Month came out this month. Uh, Steve Bruce was, an, was nominated. It went to Lee Johnson of Bristol City. Now, they picked up the same amount of points, 14 points as Villa. Uh, but do you want to hear who they beat? They beat Reading. Wolves, Norwich and Ipswich. Fair play, deserved. So, yeah, very much. Uh, their centre-back as well, his name escapes me. Flint. Flint. Aidan Flint. Ah, that's why you're here, Dan. That's why we work so well together. So Matt Lynch wanted Villa to sign in the summer. Oh, was it? But I'm not sure what he was basing. Obviously, obviously, he's doing well. He's a good defender. But I'm not sure Matt had as much Flint knowledge as he made out on the video. Well, he he uh, had a troubled start to the season. He missed a few games because yeah. of a lot of transfer, transfer speculation. Yeah, Blues. He was linked with Blues, wasn't he? Yeah. Quite a lot. Uh, but, but obviously, since he's, he's come into his own, and, and helped Bristol City onto 14 points this month. They're a point ahead of Villa in fourth at the moment, and and they're chasing the pack. Fair play, he deserves that. For them to be fourth and beat those teams that you've just just listed, I think they probably, he probably just pips pips Bruce. To be honest, yeah, is Lee Johnson one of those managers that you because you've talked about some of the other Championship managers in the phrase? He's one that you've noticed before, or is he kind of under the radar? I remember his bit? dad. At Yeovil, Gary Johnson. Oh, yeah. That's that's his dad. Dad. Yeah, that's his dad, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know much about him. Is Bristol his first job? Oh, you're I mean, he, he was given a job very young somewhere that I think was a bit of a surprise. No, I don't think it was Bristol, actually. I think it was someone dodgy like Oldham or someone like that. 
dodgy got, like Oldham. He got a job there, and he's and he's he started young. He's quite young, Lee Johnson, isn't no, he? No offense to Oldham fans. They might not be yeah. Oldham. I could have completely made that I'm, up. I'm going to find out now for you. Mate, I'm, oh, dear, no, you're not doing oh, anything, I mate. Don't have any oh, well. in here. But he's he's doing a very good job there. They obviously look quite handy against us. Ashton Gate's a, a tough place. They've got a player actually that I really like. The guy that scored against us, Jamie Patterson. I think mm-hmm. I've always thought he was quite a good quite a good player, and I was surprised when Forrest let him go. But yeah, doing a good job. Can't knock him, can you? Young, up and coming manager. There's a few of them about. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a very compelling league, the Championship, as we talked about again before, um, and it's exciting. And, and Bristol City are one of these teams that have really kind of built steadily their 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 progress, kind of up the leagues, and 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 now a really strong outfit. And they're they're playing well. Every target that he would have been given at Bristol City, like to be self sustainable to avoid relegation to establish themselves in the championship I guarantee he'd have probably met mm-hmm. every criteria that he's been given so far and that they'll be more than happy with him in charge and if they get even if they get near the playoffs that's a sensational season yeah absolutely well, yeah. they've spent some money to be fair they got a striker in for six mil mm-hmm. didn't they the French, I think he was French the guy they bought in he reminds me a bit of Codger in the way he plays they got him in this is so far a terrible podcast because we're guessing things I don't know people's names it's the old booth we should probably point out we are in the uh, Terrible booth again, the St Andrews booth. We just can't get away from it, can we? No, it's been very busy at, at, at podcast headquarters, hasn't it? And uh, we can't get into our favourite booth right now. So no. bear with us. We're, we'll obviously work out the sound afterwards. Um, but but we're doing the best we can and we appreciate you for sticking with us. Yes. Good to see some good reviews in as well. We've got some good reviews. We've got some bad and reviews. So, and a bad one yeah. as well. So thanks to that guy, <laughs> especially. Hey, thanks especially for calling us middle age. That's the, he's 32 middle age and 28. I didn't think it was, but let us know in the comments whether 32 and 28 is middle age. I mean, one of us definitely isn't middle aged. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, you put out on, on Twitter earlier, you, there was a subject that seemed to be on your heart this week oh yeah the big, this is the big one I'm shocked shocked by this so basically I couldn't decide who I wanted to win out of the out of Ireland and Wales and then I started to think about Martin O'Neill and started to annoy myself a little bit there's still obviously some pain and hurt in my uh, in my heart so I decided that I didn't want Ireland to win because Martin O'Neill was in, char- in charge of them but then a friend of the channel and a very good friend of mine Declan Pearce started giving me some stick and then a few people came in and said, oh, Martin O'Neill was a hero, Villa. So I thought I'd run a quick poll. And I'm shocked at how the results are going, to be honest, because... You've got a couple of hours left if you... Well, I mean, yeah. you're not going to get this. No. It's very much done by so the time you listen. So I wanted people to discuss Martin O'Neill. I've said, Is it, was he a hero or was he a villain, a villain? And shocking, I'm shocked at this. You're not so shocked. No. Hero, 62%. Villain, 38%. And that baffles me. Because I've got down here uh, the phrase I used to you yesterday when we were talking about him. Yeah. I've got down here that he's an egotistical, selfish babe. That's my thoughts right. on him. But you've got diff- very different thoughts, apparently. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree that he's a bit egotistical. He grew up in the in the era under Brian Clough, and so his, his management tree is very much an egotistical one. You know, he, Brian Clough um, was a was a hierarchical man. You know, if you were the boss, you were the best paid and you were you were the top of the tree. And I'm, I, there's no doubt that, that that influenced Martin O'Neill's coaching style. So I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I don't also necessarily think it's a major problem. The way he was... The, the, the way it finished at, at Villa with Martin O'Neill leaving like five days before the start of the wind, uh, start of the new season was terrible. That's disgusting. There's no getting away from that. But I can see why he felt the need to leave. I can see why he um, he had a bust up with with Randy Lerner, which was documented kind of four months before. It was, and it must have been brought up at the end of the previous season. Yeah, they they must have talked about the transfer aims, and for whatever reason, Martin O'Neill didn't get any support in that transfer window. He didn't get any of the money that James Milner brought in. And I just, I can exactly see why he left. And and, and more than that, he brought us three top six finishes. He's brought us the best football that I've seen under under Villa. Um, and and yeah, I thought I thought he did a great job. I don't think it, I mean, I'm a bit older than you. I don't think it was better than the football Brian Little played in that, that team was sensational. The Brian Little era is when I started getting into football, okay. right? So it's like, I, I maybe don't judge that with the same with the same eyes, but uh, two trips to Wembley, Euro- two defeats, European. Well, the League Cup, arguably, that oh, yeah. could, that could have gone a very, very, very influence that very sure. different 
def- different um, outcome there. Return to European football nights, which I went to a couple of, which were which were brilliant. Uh, personally, really, really good for me. And like I said before, three consecutive top six finishes. He spent. I, I looked into this because lots of people on on Twitter were saying that he spent too much money, and he, he was really did. Well, he was never the he was never the biggest spender in the Premier League for one. He was spent a hell of a lot. Well, of money I, lo- I looked it up, and he okay. wasn't. Uh, he spent 120 million in his four years there. He also brought in players. Uh, Young Milner, Downing, Delph, who also re- returned after uh, returned a lot of money after yeah. he left. So he didn't. Well, not really. He returned the sign that we paid virtually in the end. No, he made more money than he spent. He spent what ten million on the biggest spend he had was twelve million on Downing. That was the that was the biggest spend. Yeah, I get that. And let me start by saying at the time, I was I was I was living Villa, mm-hmm. and then I was living what we were doing. Yeah. But now I look back on it, and maybe it's tainted because of the way he left. Because the, as I've said, the way he left was an absolute disgrace but he did he did overspend and the first time he wasn't given what he wanted he, he ran off what do you mean he overspent he, he finished top six what were you hoping for at that point top four and we were competing for top four yeah but the football landscape was very different at that point you had the Manu, Arsenal and Chelsea so they were the top they were the top three but fourth place was wide open it was before the day City had got the team together and spent all the money that they got now Tottenham I weren't think, quite the le- weren't at the level that they are now, I, I think and City, Liverpool were a bit hit and miss. City had just come into it. Those last two seasons, City yeah. were the biggest spenders. The last season, the last full season, O'Neill had City change had changed the landscape by then. The season that irks me is two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, when we were comfortably sitting in sitting in fourth place. We were comfortable. We had it, and ironically, Glenn Whelan scored the, the game after uh, the Moscow debacle. Mm-hmm. And from then on, we just hit, we went going into free fall. But he did, he he overspent. One time when he overspent, mm-hmm. we're paying Habib Bay fifty grand a week to sit on the bench and average journeyman journeyman right back when we already had a, a right back on forty fifty k a week in Luke Young who was good who he wouldn't play because he wanted to play Carlos Queller a centre back at right back. So we spent money for the absolute sake of it because he had free reign of Aston Villa Football Club. He had there was too much trust in him. I don't. I, I, I agree that it was well. I agree that there was a lot of trust in. It. I think we were going for a model that was similar to the Manchester United, David Moyes at Everton era, where, like, if you read, um, I can't remember. I think it's called Walking on a Volcano, or Sitting on a Volcano. It's a really interesting book about how um, management structures. There's a chapter on on Moyes at Everton. I think we were probably modelling ourselves on that. Moyes knew everything about that football club, and that's that's what led him to kind of fairly consistent success under yeah. a modest, modest budget. And now I know you're saying he spent big, but you you look at the spending now. We're still spending ridiculous amounts on on bench or even worse players. You know, Michael Richards is still on crazy money. There's a bunch of players who are sitting there not really playing. Ross McCormack, uh, obviously on loan now, but but a similar story. And you've got a load of players who are on crazy money. Uh, it's all relative. That's because the club went to pieces when, O'Ne- when O'Neill left. Uh, see, that that is an argument I don't get. There was, there's five years between, or four years between us getting, or O'Neill walking out and us going down. There's, yeah. there's plenty of time. He was the catalyst. There's a plenty of time for us to sort that out. It's, yeah, but, we, it's but, we did, but we didn't sort it out. But that's not O'Neill's fault. No, I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying he was the catalyst. And I'm saying we should have got more bang for our buck. The buck stops with Randy Lerner for me. You, the, the managers that came after um, O'Neill were absolutely tragic. It's, yeah. It's an indictment on this football club that, that Randy Lerner let it get as bad as it did. We should have got fourth in 2008, 2009, and the reason we didn't get fourth was because he disrupted the momentum by picking a joke team for the Europa League against against Sparta. I think it was Moscow, possibly. I can't remember who it was that we were playing. It was someone like that. Wasn't, 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 he to, wasn't he trying to rest players so that they'd be stronger for the league and compete for yeah, the Yeah, but if you do that, you've got to back it up and you've got to win your next game. We didn't. We capitulated, and then we went on a horrific run. He could never arrest slides at the end of every single... We always had a good start, always had a good middle, and at the end of every season, we had a slump, and he could never arrest that slump. The slump... Because he was one-dimensional, he only had one way of playing. The slump is fair enough, and he had a lot of players that were were performance players. You know, your Milners, your Young... Oh, not so much Milner, but your Youngs and your Downings, your creative attacking players like that. They did play on confidence. Confidence, you're right. Having said that, if we'd have gone out of the Europa League and then gone on to get fourth, he would have been heralded a hero. But we didn't. We didn't. No. But I. Th- so I, he's not here. But if you look at that, you, you're looking at that in hindsight. If you're looking at in the present day, and you've gone, all right, we lost the Europa League, but we're still chasing fourth. Like that. That's a, that's not a, a crazy management decision. No. But the, what I'm looking at is the money that was spent, the power he had at the football club, 
we should have been better than three three sixth place finishes. Obviously, we'd all snap our hands, snap bite like bite our hands off for. Uh, by our own hands off I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> we'd do something obviously we'd do something we'd do anything for three six place finishes in the but premiership consecutively consecutively now for, we should have got more than what we got from him that's how I look back on it I, and the way he left was an absolute disgrace because he was a big baby it was the first time he didn't get what he, what he wanted and okay Many people could say, oh, we were selling Milner and he didn't want to. But the reason we were selling Milner is because we needed to desperately make some money back because he'd overspent on junk. It wasn't necessarily the fact that we sold Milner, I don't think. I think O'Neill understands the business of the business. I think it's more the fact that he couldn't reinvest some, if maybe all of that money, but at least some of that money into play. And then you look, what, four months later, you signed Darren Bent for, for 12 rising to 24 million. That was the absolute desperation, though, from the fact that we could have gone down. But if he'd had that backing and O'Neill, like... I mean, it's all ifs and buts, isn't it? But well, essentially, he's just spending the Milner money that came in, our desperation to make sure we don't go down. Which was then available to spend. You know, if we reinvest that money straight away, there's a, there's an opportunity there to, to grow and, and push on again. But you know what? You know, if we'd had Darren Bent from the start of that season, do you think we wouldn't have been fighting relegation from the start? We'd have been competing. I look, I look, look at that now and I think, whether you like Gerard Hulier or not, and he was given that money, at least you could see that he had a long-term vision and plan. O'Neill was all short term, short term, short term. Name me one youth player that he promoted into the first team squad. Oh, I can't do that. Because but there wasn't any. He brought a lot of young British players in. Yeah, yeah, he brought people and he made people like Young, Milner, Downing. He made, he the made their careers. Uh, he brought in Stylian Petrov, John, yeah. John Carew, uh, Ashley Young, Milner, Downing, Delph. Um, I'm not saying he didn't buy some good three. players, by the way. Guzan, Sibwell. Uh, he brought in Luke Young, Nicky Shorey, Stephen Warnock, Wayne Routledge, Marlon Harewood, Curtis Davis, all these English, young English players. And I think that's why I really liked him, actually. I liked because him, Because yeah. we, were, we, were, we weren't necessarily, I'll take your point, we weren't necessarily promoting our young players, which, uh, again, we haven't really done since, Lambert didn't do that either. Well, he was a joker. Yeah, but it, well, yeah, we've already done that one. But he was promoting English players, and I really liked that. And I loved it when we had a kind of English midfield, you know, Barry, Downing, um, Milner and Young. I've talked about this before, how I used to watch England a lot more, uh, maybe maybe more interested than I definitely am now. And and that was great. And that was really a, a proud moment, certainly for me as a fan. I don't know if it went all the way, because I think a lot of fans don't care about England as much as I did back then. Um, but yeah, I, I, to call him a villain... Uh, the way he left is so sour. You're totally right on that. Because he left no, he left no foundations or legacy. Because ultimately, everyone that he brought to the football club that was good got pretty much got sold. Don't you think that was a that, again a product of learner, a, a product of making money because rather than um, like we were looking, we were a selling club That's because like, we spent so much needless money. People like Habib Bay, they weren't they weren't needed. And the fact is that all these squad players could have been. We didn't need them because they could have been youth, could have had youth players, costing nothing in those positions. Because let's face it, the guy only ever picked twelve players yeah. because he had an he had an eleven, and then he'd rotate Carew and Hesker. That was literally all he did. You had people like Sidwell, Rio Coker on massive money. Curtis Davis wasn't even involved in his in his last season. You had all these players that night on massive on massive money. I mean, he got rid of Gary Cahill as well for that night which is an absolute horror mm -hmm. to look at that now it's horrific mm -hmm. he left n he left no foundations at Villa because everything he did was, sh was short term there was no long term thinking what he did and when you've got complete control of a football club there has to be some kind of long term vision in there and there wasn't there was too much trust in him and it showed that when he went we, fe we fell to pieces because there was no football people ab about, the, about the club yeah, I anymore can, I kind of feel I feel like he did have the, the he did have the the, the keys to the castle. Yeah, uh, there, there's no doubt about that. And but I feel like if he had, if he Randy Lerner shouldn't have given them to him without without a youth policy, without a without a complete footballing kind of uh, ten year strategy, something like that. And uh, listen, I don't. We'll, we'll never know exactly what happened or what what went on between the meetings between those two. There was an obvious falling out at the end of the final season with O'Neill, and and he left in a terrible way. And you're probably right, and I probably don't give enough credit to to you for for coming up with a good point there um, about about the youth product. And he should have been bringing players through, and and maybe he didn't do enough of that. It's an interesting debate because as as the um, the poll shows, it's a very split opinion on between. Maybe a maybe a short term fan view that I have, and you looking at the, the kind of longer project. I've got a couple of tweets here. If if uh, you want to go, yeah, on I just want to say I'd, I'd be interested to know the age of the people. I'm, not, I'm never going to find this information out. Yeah, I'd be interested to know the age of the people 
that voted because some of these you know, the younger people, people that are younger than me and you, that would be the only good football or any good, only good Villa team that they've seen, and we've been absolutely horrific mm -hmm. ever ever since. I've obviously seen other good teams, although if you go back before my time as well, the teams were probably some even better yeah. teams. So I've been starved in some ways. What did your dad well. think about it? I asked him. Nah, so I try and avoid asking him about Villa stuff now in case he leaves anything embarrassing <laughs> in the in the YouTube comments. Well, listen, I've got some comments here, but if you've got a comment on on O'Neill, which I'm sure you will do, um, we'd love to hear them. So leave them in the comments. Get involved in Twitter. Um, we'd we'd love to. What is that Robbie yeah, Savage thing? Declan Pierce posting gifs <laughs> all over, all right. ruining a sensible discussion. Jake uh, at Surrey Villain. Uh, he said us, he said he led us to the League Cup, uh, which we could have won. Definitely made some mistakes, but not all on Martin O'Neill, which kind of reflects my opinion uh, as well. Flip Flop 1986, uh, responsible for some of my favourite memories, but will always be remembered for how he left. Nathan Brown um, leaves a bitter taste in the mouth. Does. And uh, Simon Froggart, Simon Frog Rat on Twitter, <laughs> don't mind it. Uh, initially good, but played. Uh, a significant downfall in the club. I, I mean, initially good, three top six finishes. Um, I'm pre. Uh, that, that, that's pretty amazing. And like Dan said, you take that now in a heartbeat. You take it now, but we should have done more for me. I've got a few here as well. Darren Healy, who I always, always quite like his opinions. Mm -hmm. He said, given the resources, he should have done a lot better. This was before City and Spurs probably had their act together. Big chance squandered. His stubble, stubborn, single-minded approach cost us dearly. I blame him for where we are now. Like you said, he started it. I, I agree. Obviously, he's along the same thoughts mm -hmm. as me. Tom C, Tom Callahan, good friend of mine. You only have to look at some of his signings and the money they were on. Unsustainable. So that's what I'm saying. There was no long term, no long term thinking here. Key and Carroll, the real villain in what was, in that was always learner, handed complete autonomy of the club to Mon. Most football managers are like kids. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think Martin O'Neill is like a kid. He's not. He's not oh, like he's a big baby, mate, for the way he left. <laughs> well, you you said that already, yeah. But he's an excellent football manager. Is he though? Now. Yeah, is he an excellent football manager? Yeah, though? I mean, he, what's he done since? He he was instrumental at Celtic. He uh, he was very good at Leicester. Let's face it, mean you could go in and we'd have a good, we'd have a, we'd have a a good chance at Celtic, wouldn't we? Yeah, but it's been proved. Like Ronnie Dealer has not been very popular at Celtic at all. He's done nothing. Brendan Rodgers seems to do an excellent job at Celtic. Like they're going to go for ten in a row. It looks like you're right. It's an easy league. It's a Mickey Mouse league. Uh, he did well at Leicester. He's obviously doing well. He did with, do well at Leicester. He's doing well with Republic of Ireland. Did well at Sunderland though, did he? Ah, uh, Sunderland, though. They're a terrible team. I think until last night as well, the Ireland fans were pretty split on him. I, let me let me know if that's true, what yeah, I've just said I, in I, the comments. I can't, I can't tell you that. I, I, Ireland have been going through a bit of a rebuild. I can't remember when he came in, but he, I feel, feel like he missed the golden generation a little bit of the I mean, Irish. there's no real oust. I mean, Wales obviously missed Gareth Bale last night. There's no player in the Ireland team. Yeah. Who can be a talisman, I wouldn't say. Listen, it's a Although David Moller had a good go last night after I slagged him yeah, up on Twitter did, and then yeah. I got a bit of abuse good. afterwards. Don't I just don't that. think he's a good footballer. And as I say, when he's captaining <laughs> a football team, you know that game probably isn't going to be great. That's no disrespect. Well, actually, no, that is disrespectful. Very much so. Yeah, I always say there's no disrespect now. And uh, like you say, I'm being disrespectful. You very much are. It's a great debate. And Martin O'Neill is, is going to split people. So let us know in the comments what you think of him. Um, Dan. Uh, I'll say one more thing about O'Neill. Yeah. He did one thing that really frustrated me. Go on. 2007, 2008, big Marlon was coming on. He was banging in the goals every time he came on. Oh, wait, oh, no. No, Neil just wouldn't use him. I just wanted you to know, I mentioned uh, and, uh, Marlon as yeah. well. No, no, no I'm, just saying, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'd be interested <laughs> yeah. to speak to Marlon and what he thinks of his treatment. Andrew O'Neill, because he did nothing wrong, and then the next season he was completely alienated, and that's another thing I've got down there. He alienated players, O'Neill. He had a fight with Rio Coco on the training ground. He binned off people like Curtis Davis and Marlon for no, for no reason, and they hadn't done much wrong. Yeah. Thomas Sorensen he binned off, made third-choice goalkeeper, and replaced him with Scott Carson, who was awful. Mm -hmm. So he did some strange, he did some bad things. Again, I think that comes out of the Brian Clough um, tutelage experience. You know, Brian Clough didn't suffer falls sometimes to the detriment of, of his football teams and uh, and O'Neill was a similar and you look at someone like Roy Keane who also came out of that tree Stuart Pearce they tend to they tend to be very big personalities and maybe can't can't take it on themselves sometimes as well 
But yeah, but Sir Alex Ferguson's obviously a very big personality. Jose Mourinho's a good personality, but they, but they oh, back well, it up. Well, yeah, but they've. Also, I wouldn't say O'Neill backed it up to, as much as he should have done. But at Villa. to your to your point, they've also alienated personalities to a massive degree, and sometimes. To but the then detriment. gone. But then gone. Hmm. Well, they've had budgets to to be able to replace these players with. That's true. Well. It's a deal. But O'Neill had some serious budgets. Listen, serious. We, we've talked about it. and we, we won't go over it again. There's some there's some great other stuff on Twitter that we should okay. really get. Let to. us know in the comments your thoughts on uh, mine O'Neill because people some people might just watch YouTube and not be on Twitter so I'd like to see what the people who listen to the podcast think about it yeah absolutely well. um, should we get onto a couple of couple of Twitter bits yeah I see you've got them on the paper yeah. which I'm finding to be interesting yeah well do you know what I really went for it this week Luke yeah. Hatfield uh, L Hatfield star um, he gave us five choices that we had to pick one or the other alright yeah. so I'm going to go through them with you I've already made my picks uh, Karuvi Kodja Karu because so far he did more for the club than Kodja has currently done. Excellent. I've gone Kodja. Uh, young or Milner? Young. Yeah, I've gone Young as well. I loved watching Ashley Young. When I, was bet you, I bet you the majority of Villa fans would say Milner. But again, it comes down to the disrespect I feel Milner gave the club. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I really liked Milner as a player, but Young was really creative and... He was one of these kind of uh, generational players who, who really ripped up teams, and I loved watching him attack. Left in the right way as well. Yeah. Okay. Melberg or Lawson? That's a horrible one, really. It has to be Melberg. Yeah. I, I, Melberg over most, to be honest. For what he gave to the club, for sure. Uh, Friedel or Bosnich? Buzzer. Yeah, I've gone with the same, and I knew you would too. Terry or Southgate? Has to be Southgate, because obviously John Terry's only been here a few months. Yeah, and we, I think we saw the best of Southgate, didn't we? Whereas we're seeing the tail end of Terry. <laughs> we're certainly not seeing the best of him now. <laughs> no. As a as England manager, no, true. but I do think he's getting a bit of a hard time, and I don't think there's much you can do about it because our central midfield is absolute gash. If you want to give us uh, a, your comments, your your picks on there: Karuvi, Kodja, Young or Milner, Melberg or Lawson, Friedl or Bosnic, Terry or Southgate, you can do in the comments section. It's interesting. I would like to know how he came up with that, that mix. Yeah, it's a bit eclectic. There was a um, there's a pick your five aside team going round, isn't there? Yeah, so I did say that. I haven't had a chance to do it. Uh, Adam Keeling in a similar vein: Karu or Benteke. That is a tough one. As a person, probably Kuro. As a player, I just loved Benteke. Do you know what? I knew you were going to say almost exactly that word for word. And the only difference was Kuro played in a better Villa team. It was yeah. more fun to watch. Again, we go back to the O'Neill uh, experience. It was a fun team to watch, uh, whereas Benteke kind of kept us up and, and was battling. I think... Benteke is the better footballer, but Carew had more fun. I had the Super Carew T-shirt. Did you ever have one of those? No, I'd love to know what the Super Carew T-shirt is. I think that's something that your mum's made for you and no. said that she's bought it no. for you. No. <laughs> I don't think that's that. I think that's I, a thing. I got it at a European Cup night. We were at home to CSK in Moscow and uh, it had Carew 10 on the back and just had a Superman thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. OK, you've explained it properly now. Yeah, I remember them being on sale, actually, now. How, well, like, Apolo- what would you apologies. call it? I don't know. It's just the way he's the soup. You talked about it like it was a... a Official garments that everyone should have had. Oh, well, no, I just okay. had them. I liked it a lot. Oh. Um, Mike AVFC and Will Crawford as well raised the the possibility of safe standing. Now it's um, it's rearing its head again. Um, more more teams are looking at it. Celtic have implemented it. Dundee, Chelsea, Spurs are all considering it as well. Something you'd like to see at Villa Park? If it's safe, yeah. There's no reason not to do. It. I'm not sure where you'd put it to begin with. Mm. But yeah, why not? I I would like to see it. It's supposed to make football a little bit cheaper again. Um, obviously, safety is the main priority. But you think that gone are the days where something like the Hillsborough disaster might happen. They do it in Germany as well. Um, and there's obviously models where it can work. Yeah, if it's safe and it, it, like you say, it looks good in Germany and it seems to work there, why wouldn't you do it? We're but. just a little bit before the... Or a little bit after, sorry, the Hillsborough, Hillsborough generation, aren't we now? So I guess we don't reflect on it as much as maybe others. Like maybe your dad might have a different view on it. Let's not ask him about anything, to, I, I, to be honest. I always want to get Dave's opinion because it's always favourable to me. <laughs> no, but let's not get him involved. <laughs> Until he does fan cams, he's not allowed to get involved. All right, I, I've got one more for you. Uh, uh, Ben Hopkins has been badgering me for, for a little while, and mainly because it's my fault and your fault. Uh, he sent us... So basically, we talked about ages ago about some decent songs at Villa. And now you've had a look at these, and you're not very happy, are you? It's not that I'm not very happy, and I don't want to be disrespectful towards towards Ben. 
but I wouldn't give up the day job <laughs> for sure. He'd not got a career and in I'm not, and, I'm, and I'm not singing any of these. Oh, you have to join no, in with I this one. No, I will not join in. I'm not going in. I told you before, I will not join in. So we've gone for... I can't believe uh, we're even including this. No disrespect, Ben. Uh, Bjarnason. Again, disrespect. Yeah, exactly. A massive disrespect. <laughs> Here comes the hot stepper. Um... To a, to a Bjarnason kind of theme. Bjarn, na, I wouldn't na, say, na, na, can I just say that... Bjarnason. I wouldn't say that he's one of the ones that we're desperately in need of Do a chant for. Do we need a left mid Bjarnason? Do we need a centre mid Bjarnason? I don't see this going anywhere. Do we need a left back Bjarnason? We do need a left back. We do, but I don't think we need Bjarnason there. What, I don't see that chant taking off. Let's, what, put, let's put it that way. What about uh, to the to the um, tune of Country Roads Take Me Home? This, no. one, this one really doesn't fit. No. Trinity Road. No, I'm not having <laughs> Take it. me home. Because it's, it's already a Man U song. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, that one's out. Uh, last one he's got here, uh, Mambo number five. Oh, no, I can't sing this. It's, it's, I can't, I can't <laughs> sing this one. You're saying that they're bad as well? I, well? Hey, listen, I have massive respect for Ben for sitting oh, yeah, down. Right, thank, you for having, thank you for having a go. Uh, at Hopkins Ben. I'm going to come up with something better than these for next week, guaranteed. Whoa, you're putting that on the marker. I'll do it. I'll come up with a better chant than any of them. All right, you heard it, you heard it here first. Ben Hopkins, thank you very much for, for putting them in. A little bit of codger running rife. Um, that'll, have to be, that'll have to be saved, and we'll see if it's better than Dan's efforts next week. I don't think I can do much worse. <laughs> right, what else have you got? I had a question here that I quite liked. Go on. From the Holt tweet. With Keenan Davis making his mark now, what happens to Hepburn Murphy? Oh yeah, I saw that. That's a that's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough because we've got a dearth of of play. Oh no, we haven't got a dearth. I've used this before. We've got a uh, an array, an array of of young attacking talent, and it's tough to to get it all in there. Does he go on loan? Yeah, he could do with a loan. To be honest, I think he's too, I think he's too comfortable at Villa. He's probably on decent whack because he's had a contract fairly fairly recently. He's not playing. I don't think he's going to get in the team ahead of Codra Davis at the moment. Probably not ahead of Hogan either. Arguably, he'd have him ahead of Gabu. But he isn't going to play the football for his development here. Mm-hmm. And he's done youth team and under-23s football to death. So I'd get him out on loan somewhere. Yeah. See if someone like Burton Albion fancy him. Or in the championship. If we can, yeah, get him. Loan him out at the highest level possible. But obviously, you need to loan him where he's going to play. Yeah. Following on Instagram, he just looks too comfortable. Looks like he's living the life. But ultimately, he hasn't done anything yet. I do need to talk to you about Instagram, actually. Well, is rabbits of Instagram an actual thing? Yeah, every time you have a pet now, you when you put a photo of that that animal, you put of in, something of Instagram. So I, if, you, if you had a pet cockatoo, you'd have cockatoos of Instagram. I feel like we should apologise to the um, to the previous generations because this is this is what we're doing with the amazing technology we have. Rabbits of Instagram, that that gets my goat. Does it? Excuse the pun. Good pun. Yeah. yeah. Should point out for anyone that does follow me on social media, I have been posting a bit of and Facebook and yeah, and Twitter about. Well, I don't have. I only have people that I know on Facebook, so they weren't they weren't mine. But I've not been done too much on Twitter to be fair. But I have had some new pets at the weekend. <laughs> I'm close to muting you on Facebook. And I have put up a few photos of them, but it's died down since I've gone back to work. But I have named it's the, Tuesday, by the way. I have we named, had about eight, yeah, that's true. Eight videos. I have named the male hours. player after the male player, the male <laughs> rabbit after James Chester, who's called Chester. Chester Gregory Bardell, Villa connotations all over the name. Oh, I don't mind that. So let us know in the comments whether you've ever named any of your pets yeah, after any Villa players. Yeah, let them, we'll, we'll read them out next week. That will make for a, an interesting 30 seconds, I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, if you've got any um, Villa-inspired pets or kids, uh, that'd be great, actually. Just say that I really wasn't 100% sure about getting pet rabbits because I've always been a cat man. Andrew was the one that wanted them, really, but we can't really have cats where we live. So, But I have fallen in love with my pet rabbits. It must have taken you minutes, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, I'm like that. I'm all, an all or nothing guy. I don't like uh, pets generally. They leave hair everywhere. Um, all right, do you want to play the game? Yeah. Come on. All right, so to remind or to recap, or if you're new to the podcast or the videos, thanks very much for finding us and, and, and subscribing. Usually they're better than this. I'd say this hasn't been our strongest. So oh, I think this one's been a fun one. Is this booth? I blame this booth. I never feel as comfortable and as on good form when I'm in this booth. I'm having a nice time. Away, I'm not no good away from home. I'm a luxury player. Yeah, You've got to get me at home. Um, so every now and again, particularly on inst- international breaks where we, we have a little bit more time to discuss... We're going to need a pen. We're, we're going to... There's a pen. Yeah. Um, we're going to... Uh, we have a little bit more time to discuss. Sorry, you threw me off there. Uh, Dan Bardell once said that he could name any squad uh, player from their number in the Premier League generation. So that's 1992 onwards. 
We've done this twice so far, so I give Dan t uh, five five squad numbers, and he has a go. We've done it ten total, and you are ten for ten, aren't you, at the moment? I have. I've done well. It's, so far, I've, I've lived up to my... Uh, reputation that I gave myself. It's frankly scary how much Dan knows about squad numbers. Um, so we're going to go again. I've got five more. I've also got clues because last time I didn't have any clues. I don't need clues. You didn't need them, but you you did feel a little bit. Oh, you, I'm getting the years oh, down of the managers so that I. So oh, that... I'm not sure about this. I did it last time. It's the only way that I can. Um... I can guarantee that I'm talking about the right season. It's hard to just know what I think manager I'm, is I'm in gonna, charge. I'm going to put in a time limit as well. I've actually got, got the managers written down here because I wanted to because uh, I respect you. Okay, got him. All right. So from the 1993, 94. Oh, that's too season, early. I, 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 oh, I did say from 94, 95. I think the first week, but go for it. I'll I try. It's a Premier League year. Nah, maybe I did, but I, 94, 95 was when All I first right. got a season ticket. Okay, but I'll try. 93, 94, number two. Earl Barrett. Easy one no, to start, no doubt. isn't it? Do you, want, do you want my fun fact that I had? Go on then. Um, we bought him for from Oldham for yeah. one point seven million. That transfer record, uh, the money received by Oldham, that record still stands. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah, that is bad. Yeah, you, I mean, it was funny big, you mentioned big, big Oldham. Money, big money in those days. Yeah, that's that was true, for actually. a fullback. Yeah. All right, from the nineteen ninety six ninety seven season. Yeah. Number fifteen. Ninety six ninety seven. Yeah. Fernando Nelson. That's right, I know it's right. Oh, it's right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course it is. I'm trying to build up the suspense here. Yeah. You won't get me with that. All right, we're two for two today. This is, I'm, I'm starting nervous now. 1998 to 1999, number 20. Skimeka. Yeah, I'm smashing this one. Came through the youth Ricardo system. Ricardo Skimeka. But left at the end of that season, joined uh, Nottingham Forest, I believe. Yes, I think you're correct. Uh, 2002 to 2003. Yeah. Number. Oh, I think this is where you're going to get in the... 22. Vassell. The record has been broken. Have I not got it right? You got it right. Have I? Yes. Oh, oh no, I have. The magic is broken. Right there. Let me see if I can. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've rushed in. I've rushed in. He was number 10. Is this Booth? I have rushed in. Dublin finished the uh, top scorer with 14 in this season. Number 22. Can you name him? 22. We finished sixteenth. No, I think that's going to be a, that would be a struggle. I think Hassan Kashlul. Hassan Kashlul is <laughs> right. Oh, no. we're going to have to get the the bleeper on there. I deserve, I deserve a bit of respect for getting it the second guess. I just got my seasons mixed up, but yeah, I broke the I broke the record, but I got it in the end. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, you put the lid on it. On. Right, okay. Do you want the last one? Yeah. All right, so from the 2005-2006 season, number 23. His head's gone, ladies and gentlemen. Patrick Berger. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Because oh. I know he, that's the worst thing. I got it in the <laughs> end, but I just rushed him with the self. Um, yeah, my clue for Patrick Berger, he was brought in a day after my birthday. On a free <laughs> oh, transfer. Because that would have really... A clue? What kind of a clue would, would that have, have been? Today, oh, 16th of May. Great. Free transfer from Portsmouth. <sighs> Damn. 14 out of 15 just doesn't sound the same. No, but it? it's, uh, I've got some hard ones, tough ones there. Some tough ones. That's saying casual, I thought you'd get. Oh, I did. It's, it's not an obvious one, is it? Let's face it. Oh, don't start making excuses. Don't get you, sour. I've just got the season wrong. The season before he was 22 for sale. So. I've got one season out. I even wrote down and I'm still one season out. Obscene. I'm, I'm not coming back from that. Let's end the podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to come back. I'm annoyed. Do you think it's playing away from home again? Yeah, I'm not going I'm, to. I'm, I'm, I'm 10 for 10 in the good booth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we're not going to make that a stat. You're 14 no. for 15, mate. Um, do you want to sign us off or shall I? I doubt it? many people would have got Hassan Cashel all hey, in listen, my defense. If you played along at home, let us know in the comments how many you got there. I love that game. I, I mean, I would be useless at I it. I used to love it. You are great at it. 14 out of 15 is not bad. I mean, it's not perfect, <laughs> but, uh, but good effort, mate. Can I get half? Because I did get it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to sign us off? No, you do. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. If uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Let us know in the comments what you thought. If you're listening to the podcast, look at him. He's I have some I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Um, well. If you are listening on the podcast and you like what you hear, please give us a review because it massively helps us. Um, we really, really appreciate it. What have you got to say? Uh, I was going to say that we haven't mentioned the Villa View videos, but then I realised the last Villa View video was the podcast. We've there not done go. anything, but we will be back with a preview at some point yep. over the next few days for the for the Wolves game. Hopefully the stars will align and Matt and I will be able 
to do it together. I did just want to give a little shout out to Josh Nicholson, who after three years of battling leukemia, with the, a lot of that three years he's been battling leukemia, he finally rung the bell in the Children's Hospital today and he's had his last piece of treatment. So good. So that's that's great to see. And I will be going to his, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what you call that party, but he's having a party at the end of the month. So I'll be going to see him at that party and I'll give him all the Billa fans good wishes. Yeah, please do. Awesome. Well done. Um, and... Yes, amazing. Amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, nice way to end. That is a much better way yeah. to end. All right. So well done, Josh. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll speak to you next week. Dan will be with you for the preview. Uh, and we'll catch up soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.